Hey everybody, it's time to run down everything that happened with Green Lantern in the month of November 2021. Green Lantern number 8 answered some questions while asking new ones, and I am more interested in this story now than I was before. If you weren't on board with it already, I don't think this issue will change your mind, but this arc is getting close to its conclusion and the pace is picking up. If you want to experience it with me, my video about the issue is going up after this one. Sorry, I'm running late. November was a hell of a month. As usual, the Lantern cast had me on to talk about the latest issue, in this case it was Green Lantern number 7, and then we had a nice discussion about some listener feedback and the DC fandom. If you're interested, check out the Lantern cast episode 457. Season 2 of Stargirl is over, and while the show itself was better than I expected, the Green Lantern fan in me came out of it disappointed. Jade was barely in the season at all. She had a cool fight scene at the end of episode 1, then played a big part in episode 2, and then completely disappeared until the end of the season. And when she did come back, it was mostly to set up plot threads for season 3. I don't think there's anything wrong with Issa Penareo, I think she did a good job with what she was given. They just didn't ask her to do very much, and that's a shame. Maybe she'll actually be a part of the regular cast in season 3, like I thought she was going to be in season 2, but I I feel burned enough by this that I might not want to watch season 3 to find out. Especially since so much of what I enjoyed about season 2 was the tone. This show does surprisingly well at depicting horror, but since the root of that was Eclipso being the main antagonist of the season, I have to imagine the next season will have a much different feel. Still, we've got a while before more Stargirl comes around, so I'll just have to wait and see what form it takes and how I feel about the show once it comes back. Justice League Infinity No. 5 introduced us to the Justice League of Another Earth called the Justice Alliance, and their Green Lantern whose name is Jorge. We unfortunately don't know anything more about him, since this book was already overflowing with characters before they threw in a second Justice League full of them, but I just like knowing this character is out there. It means we can always revisit him in the future. Justice League Last Ride finally ended with number 7, and what a ride it was. Now that it's over, I highly recommend you go read it, because it's just a really good self-contained Justice League story that happens to have a ton of super cool Green Lantern stuff in it. Maybe I should just do a video about this book, since it's literally impossible to tell you why I love it without spoiling all of the legitimately great surprises that appeal directly to fans of Green Lantern. DC vs. Vampires number 2 is starting to lean into the paranoia of not knowing who's secretly a vampire, as one of the only vampire agents we know about is continuing to take powerful heroes and villains off the board. The Bat Family has been mobilized, but Bruce isn't really confident in his ability to assess and respond to a supernatural threat, especially when anyone he meets, be they friend or foe, could already be compromised. All this, and we still don't know who the new leader of the vampires is. Batman has his theory, but the story hasn't committed to that, so it'll probably be someone else. Now let's talk about Suicide Squad number 9, because I was particularly interested in the idea of this crossover. The solicitation said that the squad was going to Oa to steal an item locked in a vault, and the cover showed them about to fight Kelly Quintel of the Teen Lantern. But it turns out that the only thing true about that cover and solicitation is that the Suicide Squad do in fact go to Oa. What they're actually after is a prisoner locked in the science cells. As far as I can tell, the prisoner is a new character that we've never seen before. The person who shows up to stop them is Joe, not Kelly, but she's only there for two pages and doesn't really do anything. Almost all of their time on Oa is spent underwater, meaning they don't get to take advantage of anything that could be unique to that planet, or utilize the chaotic post-battery state in any interesting way. There is a sea monster down there named Yediog, which I assumed must be a deep pull from Green Lantern history, maybe even a former lantern, but I've never heard of it and I can't find anything about it that isn't just talking about this issue. Basically, it doesn't actually matter that they went to Oa. They didn't even go there to get a Green Lantern villain! <laughs> they, they broke into Green Lantern jail to get some random new sci-fi character. This could have been literally any other prison on any planet, including Earth! And the worst part is, this issue failed at the most important thing a crossover like this is supposed to do. Get someone like me to keep reading Suicide Squad. 
Because ideally, I, someone who never read Suicide Squad, would read this issue because of the Green Lantern connection and like it so much that I'd want to keep going. <laughs> Except, all the Green Lantern stuff was disappointing, and everything about the squad members themselves was really surface level and generic, to the point that I have a sense of what a handful of their relationships are probably like, but nothing about any of them seems interesting. I'm sure someone out there is reading this book and enjoying it and thinks I'm totally wrong, and you are probably right, but it was this issue's job to convince me to read more, and it didn't. Guy Gardner showed up in Blue and Gold number 4, putting part of the Bois Ha Ha band back together again. I completely missed this, and I actually didn't get the chance to read this issue yet, so thanks to at Emerald Lanterns on Twitter for making me aware of this one. We're getting a playable lantern in a video game, namely Black Lantern Superman, in the upcoming game Multiverses. This is the Warner Brothers version of Nintendo's Super Smash Brothers, and will be a free-to-play platform fighter that puts together characters from DC, Looney Tunes, Steven Universe, Scooby-Doo, Adventure Time, and I'm sure tons more as time goes on. The Black Lantern Superman in this game is just a skin for regular Superman, meaning there won't be any combat mechanics specific to him being a Black Lantern, but I think it's pretty encouraging that they decided to put some Lantern content in this game so early. The only DC characters in there right now are Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Harley Quinn, but more DC heroes and villains will undoubtedly be added over time, and I could easily see them putting a Green Lantern in there. <laughs> Maybe if that HBO Max show ever materializes, we'll get a playable Guy Gardner or something. The free-to-play nature of the game has me a little concerned, because we don't know what kind of microtransactions this game will have. I assume you'll have to pay for this Black Lantern skin, which is fine as long as the price isn't egregious, but we'll have to wait and see and hope that they settle on a monetization scheme that isn't out of control or predatory. And lastly, a trailer dropped for the animated movie League of Super Pets, and we got to see that world's version of the Justice League, including Green Lantern Jessica Cruz. Still no sign of any lantern animals, though the trailer did show a handful of pigs and dogs with powers. Either way, it's a nice surprise that Jessica will be appearing in this movie, even if it ends up only being briefly. Now, there are four solicitations I want to make sure you know about this time. The first is Green Lantern Alliance, the second installment of Ty Pham's story that started in Green Lantern Legacy. This new original graphic novel picks up a few months after the first one and pairs Ty up with the new Kid Flash. The book is set to come out in April. The rest of these are coming out in February, and according to the solicitations, Green Lantern number 11 is the penultimate chapter in this arc. DC vs. Vampires number 5 promises a showdown between Batman and Hal Jordan. These two have fought several times before, but we've never seen them go all out against each other. And considering their specific mindsets and roles in this story, I'm very interested in seeing where a fight like this would even end up in a book like this one. And finally, Justice League vs. Legion of Superheroes number 2 doubles down on the Gold Lantern content, giving us the second part of a story called The Gold Lantern Saga that promises to dig into the identity of the Gold Lantern and where his powers come from, all while tying him into the overall story of the DC Universe pertaining to the Great Darkness. This is the book I'm most looking forward to, and I can't wait to talk your ear off about more cool Gold Lantern stuff once the new year comes around. So that's the Green Lantern Roundup for November of 2021. If you have something to say about any of these topics, or if there's anything you think I missed, let's keep the conversation going in the comment section down below. You can usually find me reacting to these developments in real time on Twitter, and I'll be back doing another one of these videos a month from now, so subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you're notified when that video drops. Until then, thank you for taking the time to watch. My name is Dan, we'll talk again soon.